Hi everyone and welcome back to our little corner of YouTube. Now if you watched the last video you'll know that we were concentrating on battening out Helsing. And if you're new around here you're probably asking yourselves the question who or what is a Helsing? Well Helsing's the name of the panel van that we're converting into a camper van. And Now don't be looking at me like that, I know I'm not the only person out there who goes naming their vehicle so let's just leave that there shall we. But like I was saying we're converting a panel van into a camper van and we're documenting the whole series on YouTube. So, like I said, in the last video, we were concentrating on the battening. And in this video, if the video description hasn't gave the game away already, hopefully these materials that I'm surrounded by will, will be insulating the camper van. So, if that's something that might tickle your pickle, then please feel free to stick around. So do you know what guys, I feel like my back's kind of against it this weekend. Um, I only really have the weekends to work on the camper van because of work and other commitments. And unfortunately for me, this weekend apparently, and it's 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 true, it's absolutely lashing it down out there. You can probably hear it pitter pattering on the roof. It's blown a gale out there and the sky is just grey and gloomy. It's just not pleasant at all. But you know what, I guess it's a perfect test to find out whether or not this camper van has is watertight because if you watched any of our other videos you'll know that we've cut quite a few holes in it and you know what we're not we sprung a leak so before we crack on the insulation I'll quickly show you so to be completely transparent show you guys that I'm not perfect and that I do make a mistake every now and again we sprung a leak on one of the rear windows but I guess in the grand scheme of things when you consider that I fitted two side windows or one down that side we fitted two roof vents, we screwed the solar panel to the roof, we've got the gland coming in through for the solar panel, the MiFi antenna, just to have the one leak down that one side, I think we're doing all right in the grand scheme of things. And that just so happened to be the first window that I fitted. So I've never done it before and clearly I've made a mistake with the bead of adhesive that I put around there, that there must be a gap somewhere and I can only assume because I've, I've came out here on many an occasion when it's absolutely chucking it down just to make sure that we're watertight and there's no issues and up until now I haven't noticed a problem so I can only assume that it's because the rain's been blown in from a certain angle and, that, and that's what's causing it to leak but for the time being I'm just going to put a bucket down on the floor to collect all the stray droplets and then when it's a bit drier outside I'll, I'll sort that out it's not the end of the world, it's something that can be fixed but anyway Let's crack on with the insulation. So the plan is I'm going to work in reverse order to the battening. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. So the very first thing that I'm going to take care of is cutting the PIR boards down to size so that they fit between the battens on the floor. And before I place them between the battens, what I'm going to do is clean the floor one last time just to make sure that it's perfectly clean. And then like I say, I'll place the board down and once the floor is completely covered, I'll then tape all the gaps using foil tape and then that's that part taken care of. We can then turn our attention to the walls. We opted to use 25mm PIR insulation board to insulate between the roofing battens on the floor. We found that using an old bread knife made short work of cutting them down to size. What a joyous sound cutting them makes. use 75mm foil tape to seal the floor and would like to use 100mm but the jump up in cost was huge and as you can see here 75mm it's more than adequate for the job. The same thickness of insulation board was used to line the ceiling. Lots of measuring and lots of cutting to get the board to fit the shape of the roof. Now a lot of people nowadays seem to use stick pins to attach the boards to the ceiling. Now I think they're amazing things but when the time came for me to price them up I found that they were too expensive for my build. So I opted to use some stick solid adhesive which is a fraction of the price and it did the job just as well. Now one of the first things I realised by taking this approach was that a few little blobs on the ceiling are not going to get the job done. You really need to put a good bead on there for the board to attach to. 
In doing that, it negates the need to prop them up with some wood whilst you're waiting for the adhesive to dry. It's all a learning curve though, and we'll figure it out as we go along. And in saying that, one thing that I soon learned was that filling the ceiling cavities with large one-piece stretches of foam was only making life difficult for myself. The two reasons being that the boards aren't very flexible, so it's difficult to manipulate it to follow the contour of the ceiling, which then makes it difficult to glue them into place. It took me a while, but I realised soon enough that the best way to fit the board to the ceiling was to put it up there in smaller pieces. It allows you to get a nice flush fit against the ceiling and also makes life easier when it comes to sticking it up there with the adhesive. And of course any extra gaps that you've now got in the board because you've cut it into sections can just be covered over with foil tape later on. We're going to be having a fixed transverse bed across the back of the van. So in framing the van we glued some battens to the side of the wall where our headboard would rest. We stuck insulation board down in all of the gaps between the battens so once the van's finished we'll have a nice well insulated area behind us. For all of those awkward places and difficult to reach nooks and crannies we opted to use plastic loft insulation. It's cheap and cheerful and it has great insulation properties. Now with regards to all the materials that we're using to insulate our van, I just want to say that I'm no physics professor, I'm no thermal engineer. I'm just someone who's wanted a camper van for 13 years and for the last 5 years has wanted to build their own. I've tried to research the topic as best as I possibly can and just apply common sense to it. We're using building materials that have been designed to be used in the house and we're trying to make them fit our insulation needs for our vans. And because of that I think there's always going to be a compromise. I mean insulation, it takes up space and it costs money and I suppose all any of us can do is decide what's going to work best for us and where are we going to have to compromise. To over exaggerate I guess it would be nice to have 100mm thick insulation but of course in doing so you're going to eat up living space in the van. You can see here I'm insulating the walls as best as I can but then on the other hand I've got all these windows that I've installed in the van. In the full heat of summer just imagine how much heat they're going to let into the living area. But I didn't want a stealth van, I wanted a weekend warrior in vehicle that I can take away and when I'm parked up somewhere I want to be able to look out into the wide open world and see what's around me. So for me that was a compromise that I was willing to make. The reason that I'm using Reflectix in the van isn't to act as a vapor barrier. It's there to reflect back any radiant heat in the summer and help keep the van cool. It's going to do the same job as that foil sheet that your granny used to put behind the radiator to reflect the heat back into the room rather than have it be absorbed by the wall. But in our case the Reflectix will have a dual purpose so in the summer months it'll be reflecting the heat away from the vehicle and then in the winter months it'll be reflecting the heat back inside the vehicle. Just think of the van as a giant thermos flask as the principle is exactly the same. Now before I insulate the lower body panels there's one thing that I want to take care of and I'm considering this to be future proofing. What I want to do is I want to clean out the inner sills and uh, give them a good clean and then give some give them some preventative rust treatment just just to hopefully avoid any issues later on down the line. I mean you've got to bear in mind that this is a 13 year old van and considering its age it's actually not too bad down there. I mean of course if, if you don't know Citroen Relays they're, they're galvanized so they're not inflicted with the same rust issues as other vans are prone to. But regardless like I say what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Give it a good scrub down there, vacuum it out, and then we'll treat it with some wax oil. And you're able to see down there just how clean it is. There's a bit of superficial rust but when you scrub away at it with a little pad it just lifts off and then you can see the paint beneath it. Now who would have guessed that your skin had come up second best to get some sharp edges of metal? 
my arm's red raw from all the scrubbing down there, but it's clean and I'm really pleased with what I managed to achieve down there. It's nice and tidy and I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised at just how just how little work that I've sort of had to do to sort of clean the area up. Um, there's just a little bit of dirt and grime and it's bone dry down there. Don't get me wrong, there is a little bit of superficial rust down there, but nothing, considering it's a 13 year old van, nothing that I'm overly concerned about. But what I'm gonna do now, now that it's nice and clean and tidy, is I'm gonna treat it with this wax oil stuff. And it's, well, it's, it's, it's tried and tested, isn't it? I mean, this stuff's been going for years. Rust proofing for cars, kills, all, kills old rust, prevents new rust, spray inside doors, panels, box sections, and other internal structures. It's the stuff we want, isn't it? I tried to give the sills and lower areas of the van a good thorough coating and I've decided that I don't want to seal the area off so if I do need to add any more in the future it'll be easily accessible. Rust prevention taken care of, it was back to the insulating. this cork roll stuff. Now it says that it's natural thermal and acoustic insulation and I've decided to use this stuff because it's cheap and cheerful and the insulation properties of it seem pretty decent so I thought why not give it a go. I gave above the cab a good thorough clean and degrease before gluing the cork down. The gluing question was a high temperature adhesive. Now I mentioned compromises earlier and there are better materials that you can use above the cab but they're expensive, cork's cheap and cheerful, and it's actually got decent insulation properties, so that's what I've opted for. And in an ideal world, I wouldn't have glued the reflectix straight to the cork, I would have left an air gap there, so that the reflectix would do a better job as acting as a radiant barrier. Glue to the cork, it'll still do a job, but it just won't be anywhere near as efficient as it would be if it had an air gap between there. But then on the flip side of things, in those cold winter months, the opposite side of the reflectix will help keep the van warm. We really need to talk. Right. <laughs> I want to have a con I want to have a controversial conversation with you guys. And there's a few of you that have been with me pretty much right from the very start of this van build and what I'm about to say to you might upset you now, but please bear with me, hear me out and just listen to what I've got to say. I want to talk to you about the controversial subject of vapor barriers. And in this van, I'm not gonna be installing one. The reason I won't be installing one in this van is because I thoroughly believe that 99% of us, when we're trying to fit a vapor barrier to a, a camper van or a motor, a self-built motor home, we won't be able to 110% be able to seal it off. I think there's always gonna be areas where moisture can seep through and get behind the panels. So I'll use the storage area above the cab as an example. So on my particular type of van, obviously I've, I've tried to insulate the in, inside of the metal. Um, but round the back there, there's a big hole and it runs all the way around and it travels off to who only knows where. I know it goes down into the pillars and then of course it's gonna travel. You know, air can travel all the way around the inside of the, the vehicle from there, all inside the pillars, all inside the van. And there's a lot, I've seen a lot of YouTubers that have done their own vapor barriers. And this is one area that they neglect to sort out. So all of the work that they've done to the rear of the vehicle, it, for me, it's all been done for nothing because like I say, at the front here, air can get all in down there, moisture can get in there, it can travel down into the pillars and work its way all around the vehicle. And another reason why I don't think a vapor barrier is right for us is again on these type of vans, and I assume it's the same for all vans, that in the sills there are drainage holes. Now they're there for a reason aren't they? Whoever's engineered this van, they don't put drainage holes in there for no reason at all do they? And if you're going to go sealing your van off or trying to seal your van off with a moisture barrier, 
then does that mean that you should be sealing off that drainage hole down there? Because of course, air and moisture can travel in from the outside while that's open. So you, again, you, you, you've gone to the effort of putting a, a moisture barrier on the inside of your vehicle and you've then got a hole down there. So that moisture barrier for me, it's, it, it's all for naught. Now I'm firmly in the camp that the metal of your van, that's your vapour barrier. For me, installing a vapour barrier in your van, it's great, at least in theory anyway. There's a legitimate argument that if it's not completely sealed, your vapour barrier might actually increase moisture buildup on the inner skin of your van. We've all seen when a double glazed window's popped and moisture's been allowed to get in between the gap, and that's exactly what could happen in your van. For me, insulation and ventilation are the key, they both go hand in hand. Insulation to keep the van at a nice comfortable temperature, and ventilation to keep moisture under control. There you have it guys, that's the insulation taken care of and it's taken so much longer than I, I thought it would do but I'm so relieved that I finally finished it and I can sort of concentrate on the next stage now and I know I've said in so many other videos that I'll be, I'll be glad once I've started on the interior of the vehicle but when I said that I didn't mean the insulation, I meant the sort of final fixtures and fittings, you know, the things that you see the things that you see when the van's completed so for instance in the next video i'm going to be tackling the floor and the ceiling and i'll be putting the the ply down floor and ceiling but they'll also have the final finish on them as well so at the end of that video you'll see what you see is the the finished article that that's it that's done and dusted now if you've done your own self build i'd be really interested in hearing your own thoughts on how i've decided to tackle my own insulation especially in regards to the moisture barrier because i know that it's such a controversial such a controversial topic and uh, i know the sort of how i've i've decided to um, approach it probably differs to most and another thing that i'd like to say is if you're you're about to insulate your own self build do your own research do your own research don't listen to the first person that you come across do your own research look at multiple sources and just just make up your own mind for yourself um, there's lots of different opinions out there like I've already said but just just do what's right for you like I say compromises now on that note I think I'm going to finish that sermon there but what I will say is if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so and um, every video that we bang out going forward is going to be another little piece of this jigsaw finally finished and there's not many pieces left to do so if that's something that might interest you then like i say please do consider subscribing and all that's left for me to say now is thank you so much for watching until next time take it easy stay safe and we'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video then please give us a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more and you haven't done so already then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell down below so you know exactly when we put up a new video. And until next time guys, take it easy, stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.